please subscribe. Return about 10 years, and Audi's audacity was on full display. Powered by a snarling, turbo diesel 6.0-liter V12 with 500 horsepower and 738 pounds to foot of torque, the Q7 V12 TDI was a literal heavyweight at greater than 5,700 pounds and has been offered only to its European clients for the equivalent of about $185,000, which makes it the priciest Audi of its day. Since that time, Audi's grandiosity has receded somewhat from this high water mark. The R8 might be super -er than ever, but 12-cylinder full-size luxury sedans such as the A8W12 are an endangered species. The Q7 V12 TDI's successor, the SQ7 TDI, has dropped four cylinders and a chunk of torque, and it is half the cost. And here we're in a variant of the Q7 that the marketplace hadn't considered or desired back in 2008, powered by an engine with one-third of the powerful diesel's displacement and cylinder count, the Q7 2.0T Quattro. Having said that, the 2.0T does not feel that spy all the time. The 8.2 second rolling start figure indicates the degree to which downshifting and turbo lag interfere with acceleration, so unless you toggles the shifter into sport mode or puts the vehicle in dynamic mode through the Audi Drive Select system, sluggishness is all but unavoidable. We found ourselves pushing the pedal to the ground regularly, which did not help our fuel economy. And throughout the rev range, the four-cylinder spins with a sinewy smoothness commensurate with its lavish host vehicle. Lower Limits The Q7 2.0T's relatively lower curb weight also makes it feel nimble and responsive, changing direction quickly and predictably. But despite its discretionary 255-55R19 all-season tires, a $1,000 upgrade from the normal 18-inch wheels, its lateral grasp of 0.80 gram was markedly lower than the 1990s sports car like 0.90 gram of our overachieving long-termer. We should note that our long-term Q7 advantages from the discretionary. $4,000 adaptive chassis bundle, adaptive dampers, air springs, and four-wheel steering, and low-profile, 21-inch summer tires, none of which are accessible with a four-banger. Nevertheless, the foundation Q7 suspension ably absorbs bumps and keeps the body from rolling too. The four cylinders more small rolling stock might also account for the Q7's unsatisfactory 186 foot stopping distance from 70 miles per hour, a whopping 31 feet more than our heavier 3.0T despite having the identical large 14.8 inch front and 13.8 inch rear brake discs. The Q7 2.0T's optional 20-inch wheels and 285 45 series all-season run flat tires may represent a worthwhile expenditure, particularly since they only cost another $800 over the 19s on this car. Oh, and be aware, towing fans, as this one is graded to tug up a trailer to 4,400 pounds. Gray Matter the comparative thirds of our test case was accentuated by its color scheme. Painted Floret Silver, a $575 alternative, this version's exterior was downright dull and nowhere near as cool as our graphite grey long-term Q7 3.0Ts, with its titanium black optic bundle and above 21-inch wheels. Only close inspection shows the styling nuances of the Q7's layout, such as flared rear fenders, serrated grille vanes, and skid plate-like lower bumper details. Helping somewhat were full LED headlights and taillights which are part of the 2000 Vision package, which also contains a top-view camera program and Audi's nifty 12.3-inch virtual cockpit digital instrument cluster. That virtual cockpit screen, in actuality, was the highlight of our evaluation Q7's inside, which was outfitted with black leather. While we have sampled several other 2017 Q7s with more trendy color schemes, this one's blackness was utterly gloomy, its dark grey oak wood inlays hardly noticeable everywhere except for the middle console. 
the memory card with our inside graphics became corrupt, so the photographs in our gallery reveal a brown interior from another Q72.0T. We think it seems far less dire, just after more time spent pressing its haptically perfected switches and buttons, scanning the sharp resolution of both the virtual cockpit and the stand-up infotainment display, and enjoying the sensible logic of its MMI infotainment system does one come to delight in the refinement of the Q7's cabin. Front and rear seating areas feel grand and open, thanks in no small part to the typical panoramic sunroof. We cannot say the exact same for the next row, which is best left for we once are folded to make way for freight. Sensible price. At least our evaluation Q7's price did not climb into the stratosphere from its $49,950 starting point. In spite of all the options already mentioned, the 4000 Premium Plus package, such as proximity key entrance and push button beginning, my navigation plus with MMI touch, smartphone integration, blind spot tracking and back cross traffic alert, a power adjustable steering column, LED interior lighting, and much more, the 500 cold weather package, heated steering wheel and back seats, along with the $350 rear side airbags, our test car was comfortably under $60,000 totaling out to $58,375. This experience together with the 2.0T did not necessarily burnish our excitement for the Q7, but it remains our favorite mid-size luxury SUV. Neither did it diminish our expectation for some of the more intriguing Q7 versions that Audi has planned in the future, such as an electrical Q7 and even a potential RS Q7. However, we would recommend for updating to the $6,500 pricier 3.0T and, barring that, at least getting an interesting color.